Hi, I'm Jacob Cebulski. Welcome to Rapid Miner Data Mining and Data Visualization. This is the first uh, video in a series um, which is going to look at Rapid Miner and predictive uh, modeling. Uh, we're going to look at uh, a particular case, and this is the case of a legal firm called Righteous Compensation Lawyers um, that recruited us to look at a data set they have collected and figured out if we could predict um, future cases, uh, the outcome of future cases, uh, based on three factors. The first one is whether or not in the future claim applications of um, workers' compensation, um, there is a possibility that parties involved in um, the workers' injury may have been culpable. Um, for example, uh, someone spilled oil in the workplace and another worker slipped, uh, someone did not clean it up, and the injury is actually the result of uh, someone's malpractice practice or lack of attention or simply not doing the work. Another possibility is that there is a motor vehicle involved and uh, those motor vehicle injuries would normally fall under uh, a different insurance and would not be paid from workers' compensation claims. And finally, that someone lodged a fraudulent claim and uh, the, the case would end up in court and uh, the claimant would be sued. So we have over 3,000 examples of past claims classified in terms of body parts, nature of injury, cause of injury, um, and then we have some outcomes. Um, the outcomes are uh, um, due to the investigation of um, the company um, lawyers and uh, some notes were taken in a process throughout um, this investigation, which is actually in adjuster notes. And eventually someone said, yep, the vehicle was, was indeed um, involved and uh, the flag would be one um, attached to this claim. Or that uh, it was a fraudulent claim. Uh, most of the claims would not be fraudulent. Or that after some lengthy process, it was determined that um, we could recover the cost of uh, paid out claims and possibly uh, maybe legal costs as well. And that would be coded all as zero or one. Um, and this is the data that was given. So uh, what we hope for is to uh, create a model, a predictive model that given any new case could uh, sort of automatically or semi-automatically determine whether the vehicle was involved, uh, possibly because the, the nature of injuries was such that most likely is due to uh, motor vehicle accidents, uh, or whether um, the, the, we are likely to recover the cost because of someone's um, um, bad practices, uh, maybe um, the employer or the worker, uh, or whether it was a fraud. And if that's so, that possibly we could save uh, the legal company, the insurance company, a lot of um, costs involved. So this is the problem we are facing. And what we are hoping for is that we will be able to do this using a tool such as Rapid Miner. Rapid Miner is a data mining tool and um, it's great for developing um, very complex um, uh, predictive models. What we see in front of us is uh, what we see when Rapid Miner starts. Uh, if you go to rapidminer.com, uh, the website, um, you can download the software, install it. When you run, uh, this is what you see. And uh, in the middle is the area where we're going to work, just the work area, and uh, we're going to develop analytic process there. On the left hand side below, we can see the repository. Um, the folders we have created and in those folders we have uh, projects and data. And normally when you start the first thing you need to do is to configure repository, name it appropriately and navigate to the location where you want to store the data. So I have created such place. Um, let me just find where I am. 
So this is my repository area with four folders, one for data, um, and I have uh, two mini projects there, one for workers' compensation claims, another one for looking and predicting car prices. Um, and the data is stored here in two subfolders, and we'll be fetching this data and manipulating it. So that is already created. We can say open this folder uh, and save it, and that means um, I can have multiple repositories for different purposes. So that's one. Uh, what we see at the top is um, uh, operators and operators come in folders and depending on what extensions you install you'll see um, quite a um, different number of those folders and we could either browse through for example i'm be looking for an operator to read the data in so data access files read and we can read data in numerous formats one of them is read csv i'll grab the operator and drop it in my working area. Um, what we have in the middle is uh, we are going to construct the analytic process. An analytic process usually starts from, as we can see here, fetching the data, cleaning the data, creating models, validating models, producing reports, visualizations, and uh, creating some output. So we have input port, we could, if the data comes from another process, we could input it or we have output port. So at the moment we're going to create a very small um, a workflow, just reading the data and uh, uh, we could either define what file we want to get or we could use an import conf configuration wizard that will help us um, along uh, the complex steps of um, fetching data. So where is it? Um, I have my uh, working folder, data, workers' compensation. Uh, there is three files in there. Uh, the, f the first one is the claims, the 3,000 and more claims that uh, I showed you a moment ago. And there's another file of claims that need to be classified, uh, the claims of the future data, the current data that a company wants to investigate whether subrogation uh, is possible with this data. But initially, I'm going to get the past claims and I go to the next tab um, and it looks like a big mass that's because this file is a comma separated file so I need to select the correct um, settings here and now if it looks like a table that's pretty good let's go to the next step I, I'd like to warn you not to hurry and press finish because there may be lots of uh, little um, details that may need to be addressed um, in each step. Okay, let's look at the next step. In the next step, we have opportunity to say that uh, we have uh, a heading. That means that the columns are named. Um, otherwise, uh, dummy names will be used, like attribute 1, 2, and 3. Uh, if we have some um, junk at the beginning of the file, we could comment them out. That's not the case here, so let's go to the next step. And now we were able to uh, specify the types and roles of every single variable, and those variables are called attributes in Rapid Miner. Okay, so the first one um, has been detected from the first few hundred uh, records that there's numbers. Um, I know they're not just real numbers, they're specifically integers. So let's pick integer. And this attribute is a unique, unique value for each claim. It's basically a claim number. And we can actually specify it's an ID. Uh, it's very important to actually pick the correct um, role of this because IDs will not take any uh, role in predictive modeling as such. And the second is uh, plain text. So I could actually say this is text and it's a normal attribute, which is a normal variable, which could be used as either an independent or dependent variable. Um, then we have polynomial attributes. Polynomial, this is just nominal or categorical variable um, with a specific set of unique values, such as neck, finger, hand, and so on. 
um, the same for nature of injury, cost of injury, and then we have flags. The flags are nominated as integers. That's because they've been coded as numeric values, 0 and 1. Um, we actually know that this is not exactly integer. It's a binomial or binary value. Uh, there's two unique values in each one of them, 0 and 1. And they stand for, it's a similar um, value as true and false, accept, reject, and so on. Okay, now we're ready. So let's finish. And the model is ready. Uh, the model is re ready because we have an operator in, the, in our working area. Um, we connected the output to results. And when I run it, those results can be investigated. Let's see what we get. This is a button for run, running. And notice that the tab at the top switched from design to results. And there could be many others like Hadoop, which I have installed in Rapid Miner. So let's, let's look at the results. Um, first of all, um, we can see there is um, a number of attributes, there's 3037 examples, um, one special attribute which is a claim number, seven regular attributes. Um, we could change the role of those attributes later on. For example, if you want to investigate um, or predict subrogation, then we could actually specify subrogation to be my target attribute, or in Rapid Miner it's called a label. Um, we can scroll up and down. Um, ideally, we should be able to verify whether the coding uh, is something that um, aligns with our intuition. Uh, for example, let's look at uh, coding of one for vehicles. So I can sort it by zero and one. And Kleiman states that while he and a co-worker were driving a delivery truck. Yep, that looks like a vehicle. Uh, the left ankle pain due to getting in and out of a truck. Yep, looks like one has been coded that the vehicle was uh, present in, uh, in this claim. Whereas uh, st strained neck trying to catch a falling object. Clearly, there's no vehicle. The same thing with subrogation. Um, this is a bit more difficult because it simply indicates there is some abnormality in the situation um, claimed by um, the injured worker. The strained neck trying to catch falling product. Um, now, we don't know why the product was falling. Maybe it was uh, insecure um, or Clement states that while he and co-worker were driving at delivery truck, it hit a bump. Uh, so possibly uh, we could have said we can't actually determine this, uh, or maybe the vehicle was driving was driven uh, in a place which um, um, wasn't uh, was off the road or things like that. Okay, so. Um, this is the basic exploration of numeric values and um, categorical values associated with each claim. Uh, we could actually look at the statistics. On the left hand side we have a series of tabs, um, data, statistics, charts and so on. So when I switch to statistics I can have, I can see all those variables uh, shown one after another. I can click on each one of them and see the little charts uh, I'll be looking interested in subrogation. There's a distribution of values, and uh, I could go in more detail and look at those specific values. Okay, so we have um, the values for the polynomial attributes and the frequencies, which could be useful. However, I may be interested to go more in depth and uh, perhaps want to do visual exploration of the data going beyond simply the minimum, maximum, the mode, um, and other details. Uh, that's another tab chart. By default, we'll, we'll see the scatter chart. I was playing with this before, so uh, by default, I have here claim number versus some other attribute, like body part. Uh, for categorical variables, scatter charts are not very meaningful. Uh, possibly, we're much better to look at 
things like bar charts. So here is the chart of um, the column. That value column is not being, by default, it would be none. And that's quite meaningless. Uh, we could look at the count. Uh, now we can see in according to the cost of injury, which is each column is a cost of injury, we count um, the number of different claims in each category. So we can see that uh, we cannot see well the labels, so let's rotate the labels. So the majority of claims were to do with uh, striking an object or slipping and falling, then lifting uh, the MVA, which is a motor vehicle accident type of injuries, and others. That's the first insight. Let's look at perhaps um, stacked bar charts. Now, normally, um, if you deal with very large number of data, when you switch to certain charts, such as stacked bar chart, uh, if, for, exa for instance, the, the value column or the, um, the group by column happens to be unique value, such as um, the claim ID, we'll have so many categories, the little box at the top, that um, um, sometimes the system will crash, but most likely you need to wait for a long time for this to finish. And the system says, yep, there's too many categories. Um, I don't have this case here. Uh, just be patient if this happens. Um, here I show you an interesting uh, application, so the selection of, of attributes. I selected cause of injury as a group by column, um, stack column, uh, which are those um, uh, colorful squares at the top is the nature of injury. The value column is subrogation is 0 and 1 and I'm going to at the moment is count. It means we have exactly the same height of bars as we've seen a moment ago. Uh, if we use sum, I'll be looking specifically at only the subrogation cases. When it was a 1, we add 1 to the height of the column. So now we could look at basically uh, in all cases involving subrogation um, what is the most common cause of injury? Striking object, slipping and falling and lifting. But within each one of them we could look at the type of the, um, the, the nature of injury. So like lifting, it's a heavy blue which is uh, perhaps some contusion or spraining and straining um, or slipping and falling would mostly involve spraining, straining and contusion and perhaps um, the green which is hard to detect. So we get the first insight into the data. We could spend a lot of time uh, looking at that data um, and trying to figure out um, what we would like to predict and what attributes are important and what values um, play the role in the interpretation of, uh, of the data records and claims behind it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to save this as soon as possible and the next thing I'm going to start uh, investigating um, like selecting of attributes as for the predictors, selecting an attribute for the label, uh, creating the model, validating the model, and so on. So we started the journey of creating a predictive model for the workers' compensation claims.